Carolyn, are we ready? Amy, are we ready? Are you ready when you are? I'm ready. Very good, very good, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we're uh, present. Um, and all of you attending virtually. Um, good evening. Thank you for attending. Uh, the Board of Department of Transportation would like to welcome you to this public hearing for the State Road A1A Atlantic Avenue Safety Improvements. My name is Gene Barano. Uh, I am the department's project manager. This public hearing is relative to state project number 443-512-1-22-01. Here with me tonight uh, is Mark Burton C from BHP. He is here in person. As well, Ryan Verdell from BHP. He is here in person. He is the engineer of record for the project. Carolyn Fitzwilliam uh, from Quest Corporation, Public Information Specialist. She is attending virtually. She may break in at some point if we uh, if we hear from her, you'll hear uh, you'll know. Amy Sermons, professional engineer with BHP. She is here in person. Nikki Melendez, down here on the left, and her BHP is here in person. David Williams is in the here from BHP. And Amanda Johnson, she was out front. She's also from BHP. She's attending in person. We're aware of at this time that there are uh, city and county elected officials and uh, staff personnel from um, city and county, uh, not just Long Beach, but the city of Long Beach as well. So the purpose of this project is to rehabilitate the asphalt pavement in the uh, entire project limit from Millsap Road to Granada Boulevard, which is State Road 40. As well, constructing a raised median and installing pedestrian mid-block crossings through State Road or A1A. The purpose of the public hearing is to share information with the general public about the proposed improvements, and this public hearing also serves as an official forum to give you the opportunity to express your opinions and concerns about this project. We're not going to play a presentation for you. After the presentation, I'll be back to help you through the rest of the public hearing process. Thank you, Jean. My name is Amy Sermons. So I'm going to go through some housekeeping slides first. Um, as Jean mentioned, we have some folks that are attending online as well as by phone. So I'd like to go through all that for all the folks attending. So before we get started with the presentation, I want to provide a quick run through through, sorry, quick run through of the many ways to participate in this hearing. For those of you joining on a computer, tablet, or mobile device using GoToWebinar, I'd like to show you how to access the webinar options. To access the control panel on a desktop, Click the small arrow on the top of the toolbar on the top right of your screen. If you are on a mobile device, tap on the screen to display the control panel. Once that is open, the control panel enables you to use the question box or download a project file. If viewing on a tablet or mobile device, the control panel icons drop down at the top of your screen. The products we have available for download include the comment form and project information handout. To download a project file using a desktop, select the file using the control panel and the file will begin to download in a separate window. If you are viewing on a tablet or mobile device, click on the document icon on the top of your screen. This will display the files available for download. Click the download icon to the right of the file name to download a project file. At the conclusion of this presentation, attendees who wish to make a verbal comment will be given an opportunity to do so. For those using a desktop, use the question pane on the control panel to enter your name and request to speak. If you would like to speak and are using the GoToWebinar on your mobile device, click the question mark on the control panel to enter your name and request to speak. Written comments may also be submitted using the question box. For those of you participating by phone in only and not logged in using the GoToWebinar, you are attending in listen only mode. To make a comment, please call the project manager, Jean Verano, at 386-943-5145 
or email at gene.varano at dot.state.fl.us. The project files and its presentation are available for download at the project website at cflroads.com backslash project backslash 443-512-1. If you are not able to access the project website, please contact the project manager, Jean Verano. So now we will start the official public hearing. I'd like to welcome you to the Access Management Public Hearing for the State Road A1A, also known as Atlantic Avenue Safety Improvements Project. The purpose of this public hearing is to share information about the State Road A1A Access Management Project. This public hearing also serves as an official forum to give you the opportunity to express your opinions and concerns about the project. Your comments can be received in two ways, written and verbally. Each method of submitting a comment carries equal weight. Written comments can be submitted using the project comment, comment form or the virtual meeting question pane as was discussed. Comment forms are available for download during the webinar and at the registration table for the in-person hearing attendees. At the conclusion of this presentation, attendees who wish to make a verbal comment will be given an opportunity to do so. For those attending virtually, use the question pane to enter your name and request to speak. For those attending at the in-person hearing location, please hand your speaker's card to any staff member present. Written responses will be provided to all verbal and written comments following the public hearing comment period, which closes on December 14, 2020. This hearing is being recorded and the recording will be made available after the hearing. This public hearing is being held in accordance with Section 339.155 Florida Statutes, Section 339.199 Florida Statutes, Section 120.525 Florida Statutes, and Section 286.011 Florida Statutes. This public hearing was advertised consistent with federal and state requirements and is being conducted consistent with the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990. This hearing is being conducted without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns relative to FDOT compliance with Title VI may do so by contacting Jennifer Smith, FDOT District 5 Coordinator, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Deland, Florida, 32720, or by phone at 386-943-5367, or by email at jennifer.smith2 at dot.state.fl.us. Persons wishing to express their concerns relative to FDOT compliance with Title VI may also contact Jacqueline Paramore, FDOT Central Office Coordinator, by mail at 605 Swanee Street, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399, by phone at 850-414-4753, or by email at j-a-c-q-u-e-l-i-n-e dot p-a-r-a-m-o-r-e at dot.state.fl.us. The State Road A1A project is located in Ormond Beach in Volusia County, Florida. The project begins at Millsap Road and continues north to Granada Boulevard, also known as State Road 40, for a total project length of 1.6 miles. The improvements for this project include resurfacing the roadway throughout the project limits, constructing raised medians, and providing pedestrian mid-block crossings to support the surrounding land use. These improvements require access management changes to the roadway that will reduce the number of vehicle conflict points and improve overall safety. Thank you, Amy. This section of roadway consists of five lanes, two lanes in each direction with a two-way center turn lane. There are raised medians in some locations. The speed limit is posted at 35 miles per hour and this is a designated evacuation route. The area along the corridor is made up of numerous condominiums and hotels, mainly along the east side of the road. The majority of the residential area 
lies on the west side of A1A, mixed in with restaurants and shopping areas. There are beach access points throughout the project limits, along with public parking. Driving is allowed on this section of the beach and access ramps are located at Millsap Road, Cardinal Drive, and Granada Boulevard. With these area amenities comes a number of residents and visitors crossing A1A to get to the beach and other destinations. This map shows the locations of existing mid-block crossings and medians on State Road A1A in Volusia County. There are 16 mid-block crossings on State, a State Road A1A and three segments of roadway where medians have been built. The basic principle of access management is to limit the number of conflict points along a roadway by minimizing the number of driveways and restricting certain movements at some, some intersections. Conflict points are places where two vehicles could cross paths and potentially collide. At a full median opening along a two-lane roadway, there are as many as 18 conflict points. Each conflict point is at a location where a crash can occur. Adjusting the median opening to a two-way directional median reduces conflict points to four. Reducing conflict points helps decrease the frequency and severity of crashes, thus increasing safety for the motorist. Section, section 335.199, Florida Statutes, requires a public hearing whenever access management changes are proposed. These include the modification, addition, or closure of existing median openings, intersections, or interchanges. The proposed improvements for this project include an access management class change from access class six to access class five. Access class six refers to roads that have no median restricted, restricting left turns, while access class five refers to roads that have medians with required minimum distances between median openings as shown in the table on this slide. There are two proposed full median openings, both signalized, and there are 11 proposed directional openings for a total of 14 median openings within the project limits. Access management rule from the Florida Administrative Code 14-97 requirements were utilized to determine median opening locations. I will now do a full walkthrough of the improvements Please take the opportunity to tonight to review the new access location and provide your comments for the public hearing record. Beginning at the south end of the project at Millsap Road, the existing two-way left turn lane will be repurposed with a grass median and a designated left turn lane, similar to the existing median along State Road A1A south of the project. Directional median openings will be provided at Millsap Road and Wren Drive for northbound and southbound traffic. Sidewalk and curb ramps along the corridor will be reconstructed to meet the guidelines and standards of the Americans with Disabilities Act, or ADA. Continuing north, the existing two-way left turn, excuse me, two-way left turn lane will continue to be replaced with a raised median, providing designated left turn storage. The existing signal at Cardinal, Cardinal Drive will remain. A directional median opening will be provided between North Shore Drive and Florida Avenue for northbound and southbound traffic. Reconstruction of sidewalk and curb ramps continue north along the corridor where needed. The installation of a raised median and reconstruction of sidewalk and curb ramps continue north along the corridor. A directional median opening will be provided at River Beach Drive, accommodating northbound and left uh, northbound left turns and U-turns. A directional median opening will also be provided at Rockefeller Drive for northbound and southbound traffic. Pedestrian mid-block crossing will be installed at River Beach Drive and at Rockefeller Drive. The raised median and reconstruction of sidewalk and curb ramps continue along the North Corridor. The microphone's dead.
For those on the webinar, we've lost our audio in house, so give us one second, please. Continuing, the raised median and reconstruction of sidewalk and curb ramps continue along the north, continue north along the corridor. A directional median open, opening will be provided at the Aliki Plaza and Tides Fall properties, northbound and southbound traffic. At Arlington Way, a pedestrian mid block crossing and directional median opening will be provided for northbound and southbound traffic. North of Foreman Parkway, the existing raised median will be modified to provide a directional median opening at Ormond Parkway for northbound traffic, a southbound directional median opening at Seminole Avenue, and a directional median opening at Osceola Avenue for northbound and southbound traffic. Pedestrian mid-block crossings will be installed at Seminole Avenue and Osceola Avenue. Reconstruction of sidewalk and curb ramps continue north along the corridor where needed. North of Bosvari Drive, the existing two-way left turn lane will be repurposed with raised median to the end of the project limits. At Bosvari Drive, a pedestrian mid-block crossing and directional median opening will be provided, accommodating northbound and southbound traffic. A directional median opening will also be provided at Vining Court for northbound and southbound traffic. Reconstruction of northbound and south, reconstruction of sidewalk and curb ramps also continue to the north endpoint of the project limits. The, the existing signal at Granada Boulevard will remain. A full view of the design plans is available for download on the project website. Summarizing the improvements along the corridor, raised medians will be constructed throughout the project limits with directional median openings. There are 12 directional median openings planned along the project. The two signalized intersections at Cardinal Drive and Granada Boulevard will remain. Six pedestrian mid-block crossings will be included along with this access management project. These pedestrian crossings are located at River Beach Drive, Rockefeller Drive, Arlington Way, Seminole Avenue, Osceola Avenue, and at Boss Bray Drive. Each pedestrian and mid-block crossing will be equipped with rectangular rapid flash and beacons, also referred to as RRFBs. It is the law to stop for pedestrians in a crosswalk. To help bring further awareness to pedestrians crossing State Road A1A, Rectangular rapid flashing beacons are being installed at the six new mid-block crossings along this project. Pedestrians <clears throat> press a button to activate the signal and amber lights will flash to alert drivers that pedestrian is crossing. Drivers and cyclists should slow down and be prepared to stop for anyone in the crosswalk. Pedestrians should always make sure drivers see you first and stop before you step into the roadway. For more information about RRFBs and other safety strategies, please visit alerttodayflorida.com. This is an example rendering of what one of the pedestrian mid-block crossings could look like once installed. This example is shown at the River Beach Drive intersection. The large icons on this slide are examples of signs that would be installed on each side of the mid-block crossing. 
due to the proposed improvements being constructed entirely within the existing roadway right-of-way, there is no right-of-way acquisition associated with this project. Thank you, Mark. The current schedule of this project anticipates plans will be completed in spring 2021 and construction is planned to begin in fall 2021. The cost for construction is estimated at $3.3 million. There are several ways that you can get involved and provide feedback on this project. Public testimony will begin immediately following this presentation. Public testimony can be given virtually from home or at the microphone for attendees at the in-person hearing location. For those attending virtually, if you have not already done so, please use the question pane to enter your name and request to speak. For those attending at the in-person hearing location, if you have not already, please submit a completed speaker's card to a staff member. For those participating by phone only and not logged in using the GoToWebinar, you are attending in listen-only mode. To make a comment, please call the project manager, Jean Verano, at 386-943-5145 or email at gene, G-E-N-E, dot Verano, V-A-R-A-N-O, at dot state dot fl dot us. You can also submit written comments. For those attending virtually, written comments can be submitted using the virtual question page or by downloading the comment form during the webinar. For those attending by phone only, you can also download the comment form from the project website at cflroads.com slash project slash 4435121-1. If you are not able to access the project website, please contact the project manager, Jean Verano. Comment forms are also available for attendees at the in-person hearing location. You can submit those comment forms by mail to FDOT Project Manager, Jean Verano, at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Mail Station 2-542, Deland, Florida, 32720, or by email to gene.verano at dot.state.fl.us. Or if you are attending the in-person hearing location, you can drop your comments in the drop box at the registration table. While comments, while comments are always welcome, written comments received or postmarked no later than December 14, 2020 will become part of the public record for this public hearing. Each method of submitting a comment carries equal weight. This hearing is being recorded and the recording will be, will be made available on the project website at www.cflroads.com slash project slash 443-512-1. This presentation and a roll plot of the design improvements are also available for download on the project website. A recording of this hearing will be uploaded to the site within a week of the hearing. This website is maintained by FDOT to keep the public informed of ongoing and future projects. You are encouraged to visit this website for updates regarding the status of this project. For additional information, please contact FDOT Project Manager Jean Verano or the project consultant Mark Bertensini at the information provided. This contact information is also provided on the public hearing handout. Thank you for attending this presentation regarding the State Road A1A Atlantic Avenue Access Management Project. Yes, thank you, Jean. Thank you. Carolyn, we're still good out there, Carolyn? Yes, sir, we can still hear you. Great. Uh, thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we gave you a little presentation. The handouts that were available uh, out front, so a lot of you picked them up. Um, the same information is available at centralformularies.com. Give you lots of opportunity. Uh, to be able to contact me and report this part. Uh, my name is Jim Brown. Mark is up there. 
Um, I'd be happy to talk with you if you have questions. Okay. Um, the next part of the presentation is to collect your comments. It's not necessarily designed to be a question and answer session. Um, this is just like the comment cards at this point. We have a limited amount of time in the hall. But I assure you, the speaker card, we're going we're gonna to take your comment right here, right now. Uh, we're going to take the people that are in person first with these speaker cards. After that, then we're going to take those people that are attending virtually, either by phone or through the computer, we're going to take their comments as well. Um, This piece of paper is double sided. It's meant to be tri folded. Put a stamp on it. It's mail to me. It's already addressed to me. Okay. Um, feel free. If you're supporting the project, send it to us. We'd like to hear that. If you're not supporting the project, if you have a question, you send it to me. It's my job to use the experts that I have professional engineers, planners. Um, we'll give you an answer. Okay. Uh, and and that's, I take that very seriously. You take the time, you show your concern, and we give you that back. All right? So, if you'd like to make a statement regarding the proposed improvements, you'll have an opportunity to do so. If you're not registered to speak, you can do so now. Uh, anybody care for a speaker call? Nikki will be around, or Ryan will start collecting those for you. If you hold them up and you'd like to speak, we'll start collecting those. Again, um, for the people that are online, there's, there's the chat box, there's an opportunity to raise your hand. Uh, you have uh, people, experts, that are paying attention. And again, we're going to take care of the in-house people first, then we're going to get to the people that are online. If you'd rather provide a written statement, you may use some of the written statements. Uh, can be submitted with this public hearing. You don't have to come up here and speak through the microphone. You can just send us a written statement. You're still going to get the same response either way. Okay. Um, we do have to draw some sort of line in the sand. We're asking for these written comments to come to us by December 14th. If we can just leave it too open ended, we'll never get to the end of the project. Okay. Uh, That was our one mistake for tonight. That was a little feedback, one time of feedback. We can't control that. All right. Thank you. All right. So, Carolyn, getting an indication that they can't hear online is it because my volume is too low. Yes. If you could speak a little bit louder, that would be helpful. All right. Also, um, just as a reminder for anybody who is going to provide their verbal comment this evening. If you could please state your name and address before you speak, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. As such, uh, I will try and speak a little louder. I'm actually going to give um, the first comment uh, on our guest microphone. Let's make sure that it's working. Carolyn, if you could give us some feedback. Brian, would you mind, please? Ryan will test our uh, guest microphone. Hey, Gene, this is Ryan. I have a comment. Can you hear me? That's coming through loud and clear. Thank you. Perfect. Perfect. I think we've, um, I think we've covered some of the protocol. Let's go to our comment cards. Have we collected? Thank you. Has everyone that has filled out a speaker card in person uh, had it collected? So I can put it into the staff. Joe Hughes, Mr. Hughes, are you here? If you'd like to come down and give us your comment, sir. No, you do not, sir. Okay, should I face this way or? You're not, I'm not being video uh, okay. recorded, it's just the microphone. Okay, we don't have to map up, but I just wanted to discuss during the
reduce the amount. Of, first of all, we're going to reduce the ability for people to just make a left to visit a, a business. And some people will not might not want to make that new turn and, and go through the traffic and wait for the turn. They're just going to move on to a different business, maybe further down or next down. We're going to impact already impacted businesses with this inability to get easily in and out of business. Number one. Number two, you've got to make a U-turn and return back to the business. Now you're impacting already impacted traffic from whatever event, um, busy weekend. We're now putting twice as many cars now going back on the opposite side of the road. And you've got to wait for an opening to make a left. People are pulling in front of cars, which is already unsafe. And now you're pulling in front of cars and filling those empty gaps when you can. Now there's fewer gaps to enter the traffic. The traffic's going to be a nightmare up and down that street. And as you know, it, you, you have a certain amount of crossings. People don't fall. If in a real world where people follow the rules, that's great. People, pedestrians are not going to do that. Now they're not going to be seen by the tree coverage. They're not going to be seen by those kinds of cars making new turns in front of other cars. I see this as I'm a taxpayer in the community, and I don't want to waste my money on a tax on something that's going to be undone on another tax down the road when we realize how stupid this idea was. Just saying. That's my point. But I hate to see our businesses impact. This is going to crush our businesses and our community. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Judge. Uh, Dimitri? Hello, my name is Dimitri. I own 790 South Atlantic, right across the street from the end of Romano Park. I do understand the safety issues because I had one of my bartenders actually give uh, CPR to a dying man that got hit coming down the road on my street there on a one And the problem with that was is he came across from the park where there's already some grassy knoll area and it's dark out. Because we have turtle season that we can't have lights on our streets and everything else. Now, if you put more stuff up and down the A1A, &A, how much more visible is that person coming across going to be? And how many people do you think are actually going to go in the middle of the street to cross? That makes sense. I mean, I don't know who's drawing all this stuff. But nobody came and asked any of the business owners, well, we need to create more businesses so we can pay more tax dollars. That's what you should be doing, not dividing us to where we can't see what's happening across the street of the park. The people cannot now not come across the street to give money to the businesses. They're going to go, well, i got to go up about a half a mile before I turn around and come back to the park. Does that make any sense? Or are they going to leave their car, their car parked in the park? And then walk across, and then somebody else can't come and use that parking spot when they're already done being at the beach. This is not common sense. This is actually returning businesses, unless that's what your goal is and that's what your plan is. If that's what your plan, you're going to do a great job. I mean, I don't know. You didn't ask me. I know I'm a business owner. Did you ask me? Is there anybody else with a business owner here that thinks this is an awesome, great idea? Into the microphone. Okay, so if this is such a great idea and they didn't ask any business owners that are here already, then what makes you think that this is, I mean, unless you just want to spend money, I could use it for the relief fund that we have the COVID. Give it to me. I know what to do with it. You guys want some of that money? I mean, I'm just saying. So I don't want to get over excited here, but I understand what you're trying to do. You're trying to beautify it. And by beautifying something, it's great and wonderful, but it's not really safe. If you really wanted to make safe, put up real crosswalks at the end of the blocks. That's where crosswalks need to be. That's where people have been trained and brought up all their lives with to cross to a crosswalk is at the end of the block. Not in the middle of the block, at the end of the block. Does that make sense? Okay. Understood. So, I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. If you guys, if you guys ever reach out, and say, let me call Restaurant Row and figure out what they would like over there, or these hotels. What would it be more feasible to help you guys out? That's what the planning department, the city owner, is supposed to be doing, is to come into the businesses and help us out. And that's not helping us out. I can tell you that right now. Anyway, that's all I need to say. I'll let everybody know. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Dimitri. Uh, 
maybe it gave you time to clarify uh, for, for you to, um, it, this project is not including any landscaping. The grass mediums, the apartment will be just doing salt and grass. There's, there's no landscape component to this project. And the project is a safety improvement to, you know, correct some crash causing features. Okay, we have crash histories and these improvements of these raised mediums and these new block crossings are countermeasures to those to those features. Okay, again, this is not a landscaping project. This isn't a business. This isn't a business development project. This is a safety project, and we're using Federal Highway Safety Administration Highway Safety Improvement Funds to to, to build this project. Mr. Antonio. Yeah, I'm Sam Antonio. I'm from eighty-nine Ocean Front Condo. Um, I'm using that to really get the cost work. But the Pizarri, Pizarri crosses uh, A1A. There's an, a medium in the middle of it. I just wonder if that's even necessary because it's preventing us from getting into our building. Okay, now, years ago, that, that was one more that we had to move because of that. You know, that's going to prevent us from making left turns coming out of our building. Well, so we the medium the, the construction is, is about reducing the conflict points. So we walk across five lanes of traffic, turning left across five lanes of traffic gives you 18 conflict points, 18 opportunities to be involved in an accident, just with your motor vehicle. When you add the pedestrians, the bicyclists, and the mass transit, and the commercial vehicles, your conflict points and your opportunities to be involved in an accident go up exponentially. But I understand your I understand your point. I can appreciate what you're saying, but, but it's gonna prevent, like they say, uh from uh, can prevent us from getting in and out all the day. For years it hasn't been there and everything's fine. Why would they want to change? Documented crash histories. Yeah, we, Mr. Antonio, again, ladies and gentlemen, we're not really in a position to go question and answer for every one of you. We have a limited amount of time and a lot of speaker cards. So your comment will be addressed. I'll address you back. I'm keeping your comment card. For all of you that have comment cards, if you'd like a response to the department specifically, there's an opportunity to put a mailing address or an email address. If you give me the way to contact you, I will give you that response. To make sure you only gave me your name. So I'm sorry, excuse me. You, you're welcome to call me on the phone. I will speak to you directly no about it. it. Again, this is that form for us to collect that information and we'll respond to you. Excuse me, Gene. Yeah, since we can't Excuse hear, me. online folks can't hear. Yeah, um, please do not conduct any conversation outside the microphone because we, if you'd like to make a comment, please come to the microphone and speak loudly so that we, because we are recording this hearing and we would like to pick up all the comments. Lino Lux, please. Uh, my name is Lena. I'm with Tipsy Taco and Restaurant Row. Um, I definitely uh, like that you guys are uh, thinking about our neighborhood and the safety um, of our residents and, um, and clients. Um, I have a couple of things to say. Um, oh, also my address is 746 South Atlantic Avenue with Tipsy Taco. Um, 
I started a, an organization called Restaurant Row, and uh, the other, it's a merchants association, and we're all here tonight about this project. The biggest thing that I want to talk about is um, I don't see that there's a turning lane at Ponce de Leon and Benjamin. Um, so people would have to do a U-turn to come back. And then also, if um, there's any kind of, it looked like on the map that there was going to be palm trees, but you said there's not palm trees in the median. There's no landscape. Oh, okay, I was mistaken. But um, so if so, the Pond Stillion and Benjamin that has access to the Beach Village gift shop, Go Juice, Tipsy Taco, uh, the PRM and Bordeaux uh, office buildings, and plus all the residents down those streets. Um, so to have to make a U turn and go all the way around. That's going to hinder all of our businesses. Plus, we have a very busy intersection there with all of the residents coming in and out all day. So I definitely think that we need to have um, a turn lane there. Um, and and there, there should definitely be a crosswalk at the top of um, the park. Because just having the one crosswalk, people, if you're at the north side of the park, nobody's going to walk down to come back up. Um, just to cross safely, and people do not cross safely because the crosswalk is in an inconvenient place. So I definitely think about putting a crosswalk at Ponce de Leon, um, or at least Millsap, um, to make sure that people cross the street safely because they're not right now. Um, also, our our street is very, very dark, um, and especially this time of year when it's getting dark earlier, um, people are walking from the hotels to the restaurants in our neighborhood in the dark, um, and which is obviously very dangerous. So we need street lights, um, some type of lighting. Uh, we have to be careful about the sea turtles. So um, I've seen other places do like red lights, or I'm sure there's plenty of different options, but lighting our streets definitely needs to be um, a priority as well. Um, I think that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, certainly, that was a mouthful. And if you would care to write all of that onto a larger car, you know, you read it into the record, it would be easier for me to get to and address each of those for you. By all means, anyone, I, there's a lot of professional staff here that's intimately familiar with this project. Happy to discuss some of these things with you after we get through this public hearing process, okay? Thank you. Um, is it George? After George, could it be Charles, okay? My name is George Kalugin. Uh, address is 762 South Atlantic Avenue, Beach Village Gift Shop, the only beach. So, a couple of concerns and uh, suggestions I'd like to make. Uh, we'll start with the beginning of the project, Millsap Road. Like Dina just uh, mentioned, we should have a crosswalk over there. And um, the problem I see here is uh, the speed. A lot of the crashes are happening because of uh, fast driving down A1A. There's not enough traffic lights to slow down the cars, the vehicles. There has been a uh, fatal accident many years ago. I think it was at the corner of Millsap. A vehicle coming out, going southbound from the west side of Millsap, and not even crossing through the intersections, and got plowed by a very fast moving vehicle driving southbound. So I would recommend right off the bat a traffic signal placed at the corner of Millsap and A1A at the north end of that park, along with a crosswalk as well. That's number one. Number two, as Nina mentioned, there's a lot of homes at Benjamin Drive, Ponce de Leon. Right there would be a bad idea to put a grass median blocking, turning, going uh, west. Was Benjamin Drive. I would shift this whole beginning of the project just at Benjamin Drive, uh, north of Benjamin Drive, in front of that uh, 
premier resorts and management complex of real estate office. And I would eliminate the turning, the unnecessary turning lane at Ren Drive because that's a dead end road. There's no access beyond that gift shop ocean club. So that's an unnecessary turning lane um, leading nowhere. It's blocked off, it's gated, it's empty field back. There's no access anyway, there's no road going to end. So if I was to redesign this uh, at this Millsap Road, definitely a traffic light, and shift this one block north, commencing at Benjamin Drive, going north from there, eliminating that cross turn, that uh, turning lane at Wren, that's unnecessary, and uh, the rest seems fine over there. I appreciate that uh, they're looking out for the safety of, uh, of the people, of the public, and the drivers. Uh, also, like Dana mentioned as well, another good point was adding a lot of lighting on A1A. It's extremely dark in that area, and uh, in front of that park, it looks dark, it looks scary, and a lot of families, uh, I think they stay way up night when it's dark, and especially this time of year. Thank you for your call, George. Hi, uh, my name is Charles. I'm uh, from the Sixty Two Center Village Village Gift Shop. I'm pretty much going to go ahead and repeat a lot of what we've already heard tonight uh, from Mr. Dimitri, uh, also from my business partner, which is so, and also Lena. I feel like kind of missing the point. Um, the best trip has already a lot of issues crossing this road. By adding meetings and all these left and right turns that we see that going both north south and south, I don't believe it's going to help the pedestrians that are trying to get to our businesses. At this point, from what I've heard, Mill South Road, everything that has been said is correct. Everything they said is 100% accurate. If we were to put a traffic stop there, I think it would be a lot more beneficial for both pedestrians and both for traffic at that given time. People, it's hard to see unless you're actually there in business. Beach Village Care Shop, Dimitri's, and Sipsy Taco, when you're going down the street, people usually don't follow the speed limit. And there's a blind spot between Nilsa all the way down to Charlie Beach, where most of the people are right. It looks like we're going to need another wireless microphone, please. So, yeah, so pretty much. Right now, the main traffic that is coming out of the citizens from the livers actually coming from Benjamin Drive. And by blocking that off as well, there, I mean, like my business partner was just saying, Ben Drive is actually nothing. There's, it's, it's a road, but it leads to fields back there, which would first would make a left turn or a right turn almost pointless to have there whatsoever. Um, and the the biggest thing is this is the biggest area in Ormond Beach on Beach Side where all the businesses and restaurants are. I feel like I don't see enough crosswalks for people. I just don't see it. I feel like the meeting is only going to make it harder for people to cross, more scarier. And like Dimitri mentioned, we're raised to cross on the corners. I've never seen them in my life having to cross in the middle of anything. Um, especially when there's the restaurants there, but most of the rest restaurants actually stick more towards the north and they do to the south. And I see by looking at this page one, I actually don't see enough crosswalks for people, and I don't see it to be um, pedestrian friendly whatsoever. Well, thank you, Charles. I appreciate that. Uh, let's give that a test, please, Nikki. We could hear a minute ago, but it went out again, I think. I'm sorry, Caroline. I heard me. Nikki, but then it, it then it got quiet. Yeah, there's nobody talking. No, nobody. Mark light, please. 
to uh, make the street safer for pedestrians, I do uh, agree with the previous speakers that the crime number of U-turns is a problem and a problem, a big problem, especially during the uh, high traffic time, special events, uh, weekends. Um, my concern with the project is uh, the fire department across the street from our house now has limited to no access to the 10 or 15 uh, residences directly across the street. And so I was just wondering the fire department is going to go north and service the northern part of the peninsula coming out of there. That's all I have. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Scott Hanson, please. How are you? My name is Scott Hanson, I'm with Restaurant Row, and uh, I see a lot of familiar faces in here. Who's in here is from our area of the area. Um, I like what everybody had to say tonight, and I'm in full agreement. Uh, Millsap Road would benefit greatly from a crosswalk in the traffic light, um, because all the cars, the, the next traffic light up is Cardinal Drive and Harvard. So between there, these cars are able to pick up a lot of speed. And there's nothing to slow them down at all. So definitely a traffic light would uh, be very beneficial. Also, I like the idea of possibly either a turn lane coming into Benjamin Drive um, to access not only Tipsy Taco, but Beef Village, Kit Shops, um, the Premier Resorts Management Board. There's five different businesses right there, which, including Go Juice. There's a new um, there's a new uh, Smoothie place right there in between Tips and Top and Beef Village. So that's another business that would access. And I'm also in agreement with the fact that Green Drive is a dead end road. So having people do a U turn there is going to cause more of a traffic um, backup and could cause accidents. Um, so I really enjoy what everybody had to say. I'd like to uh, reiterate what Dimitri had to say about possibly having a meeting for the whole restaurant road. Uh, I think that would be very beneficial to us and to you. Um, like I said, the majority of us are here. Um, and also, uh, the lighting issue is a huge issue. Um, from May to October um, is the sea turtle season, but it also doesn't get dark until 9 o'clock at night. So during the months as of you know, now until then, until May, uh, they get started at six o'clock. We have a lot of restaurants in our area. So if we had some sort of lighting, it was on during those times, you know, all those people are going out to dinner between six and nine o'clock. And uh, so that would definitely be a safety issue. Uh, it's very, very dark down there. People do get hit by cars. And uh, so the biggest issue is definitely the lighting, um, the crosswalks. I think a street light would be very beneficial in Millsap. And uh, you know, the median right in front of, of all of these businesses from Millsap to Rin Drive, it, people coming northbound are not going to turn around and do a U turn and come back into these businesses. It's going to affect business greatly. And uh, so I think the idea of possibly moving that down, you know, to the start of Rin Drive or Benjamin Drive would be a great idea. I think that's all that. Well, thank you for your comments, Scott. All right, one last speaker card, and that is uh, John Nicholson. And then we'll be going to our virtual attendees and collecting their comments for the public record. Afterwards, I'll be here, my colleagues, professionals, and probably address a lot of your comments. We're about to do that in the casual atmosphere with some things and social distancing to do it. Uh, we, have, we have the tools to deal with it. Huh? Uh, yeah, I think we just like this about 25 years ago. We did something like this in the street in front of my house in Daytona Beach. Uh, there were promises made, there were drawings made. Uh, what was promised is what we had. Uh, one, 
that color to one B because I think it's an ugly thing. Uh, when you see these crossings, uh, hand signs of a crossing, you can have like 50 to 100 signs with no landscaping as you look down on them. I often go down towards Granada and you have this multitude of signage is going to really lower the quality of light and learning. And there's always the idea that learning was the better class of uh, location. So it's kind of nice that you get a down to make a back one. Uh, if not, so I can bring that one up um, when he's done. You have all so, of these terms. I don't know. You have one right in front of you tomorrow. Invariably, nine out of ten people stop their car in the middle of the road and have to back up and turn. This is not what we're going to make you turn. So you will end up with what, eight locations where people are stopping in the road? Talking about slowing down traffic, that's absolutely slowing down traffic. Um, we had promises that there could be U-turns at the intersections, only they put a nice little sign that said, no U-turns. And the cops are nice enough to give you tickets if you do a U-turn. And FDC said, oh, no, no, don't worry about that. Well, guess what? When you get a ticket for $125, you really worry about it. I'm asking you, when you look at this, look at your map, those yellow lines, is ugly gray cement for like half of the project. So it doesn't really enhance the beauty of Ormond Beach. It may or may not increase the safety, especially when you have all these cars stopping in the middle of the road. And you have a problem literally across from around the park. It is extremely well used. It was packed all the time, and I don't think you give it enough consideration. So, if these people suggested you might have talked to them, I absolutely ask you to have a talk with them and see what their problems are. Thank you. Good. Thank you, John, for your comments. Before we uh, go to our virtual uh, attendees, um, uh, we'll be hearing um, Amy and Carolyn. We'll be hearing a couple of my colleagues uh, assisting with uh, some of these comments coming in virtually. Um, my colleagues and I did uh, reach out to the A1A corridor. Both sides of the road, we emailed you, and, and we offered to have virtual, we had four virtual meetings of an hour and a half or more. Um, we had some attendance. Okay. You've got my number, you've got my email, you're going to be able to call me. I'm going to stay here after this is over. We have to go over some of your comments with you. If by no means it's the final answer, if you give me an email or you give me a written, you know, a snail mail, a post for address to send you a department response to your comment, I will assure you get that. It will be at a later date. We have to let the comment period elapse for two weeks. The department will evaluate those comments and formulate those responses. It doesn't come just from me. It's a large group of professionals and experts that will write these responses on behalf of the department to you. Amy, do you have um, some comments coming in from the virtual? Hi, yes. Gina, this is Carolyn. Um, we do have one request to speak. Um, Joe Hanush, I'm going to unmute you, and you will need to unmute yourself. All right. Great. I, I can hear you, Mr. Hanush. Please state your name right. and address for us. Yeah, Joe Hanush, uh, 87 Carrot Creek Way. Uh, I drive up and down A1A probably about five times a week on average. Uh, the raised medians, I am not in favor of at all. Uh, I think the, you know, the forced U-turns are not a good idea either. Uh, I find it better to for pedestrians and for uh, vehicle traffic when the when there is that wide open uh, uh, center lane, uh, what I do like is the from what I heard from other people was that traffic uh, way. The uh, I don't know if they were the using they're going to say the re rectangular rapid flash beacons or not or just regular crosswalks, but I think either one would work out good. But uh, the raised medians really people are going to run across the the street anyway. And raising the median there is just going to add more hazard to it uh, for both the cars and for the pedestrians. Uh, and plus, if you have grass or what other kind of landscaping on those medians too, you have to increase cost for maintenance. And uh, you're going to have someone there probably once a week or once every two weeks uh, just standing right there, a human being next to the road with traffic going by. 
I think that goes the opposite direction for public safety. So uh, those are my thoughts. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Mr. Hanush. Um, for those who are joining us virtually, if you would like to make a comment, please type in the question box your name and that you wish to speak. Um, we'll just give it a minute or two, see if there's anyone else online. Yeah, it looks like we have one more. Mark Doust. Yes, let me unmute him. Okay, Mr. Dow should be able to unmute himself locally and speak, I believe. Mr. Dow, are you able to unmute yourself? Can you hear there me you now? Go. Yes, there we go. Uh, my name is Mark Doust. I'm a professional engineer and I am very familiar with uh, traffic and traffic design. Uh, I have a home at 405 South Atlantic Avenue, which is just uh, north of Rockefeller. Um, I've lived on this street my whole life, so I'm very familiar with how it works and operates and even when it was a two lane road before it was a four lane. Uh, I'm certainly in favor of uh, traffic safety. Uh, and I think you should install the pedestrian crossings where warranted and, and when they're installed, use the, the rapid detectors. Uh, I think I'm very much in favor of that. I have a, a big concern regarding uh, the U-turn movements that this design uh, creates. Uh, we're, we're used to roadways that uh, require uh, a lot of traffic controls and, and essentially force U-turns, uh, we have a lot of those roads. And when, and when we have to resort to those, typically we have proper median widths, somewhere between 25 to 30 feet, so that if someone gets in a turn lane and then they go to actually make a U-turn maneuver, they can complete it. Uh, unfortunately, in this area, we don't, we don't have that. We have a limited 12-foot uh, bi-directional lane in the center, at least it looks like about 12, that we're trying to accomplish the, uh, the traffic management goals with. What happens in this case is that if you get in that lane and you only have the four foot separator, unless you have a smaller passenger car, most of the time you cannot complete the U-turn maneuver in one maneuver. For example, it looks like we have about, you know, 36 feet outside to outside for the, for the maneuver. And a standard like a F-150 pickup truck takes 41 feet. So what happens is you get in that lane and you go to make your left-hand turn and you wait for a gap, you go to make the turn and you can't complete it. You end up uh, nosing the curb, then you're forced to back up and make it kind of a two-point turn. And that adds, I think, significantly to the hazard of that U-turn maneuver. Uh, this is also a, a a tourist corridor. Uh, we have a lot of larger vehicles. We have vehicles that pull trailers with motorcycles during special events. And this, this road gets very, 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 very busy during those events. So the time uh, when you try and actually see if you can find a, a large enough gap to do this two point maneuver is very slim. Many times what happens in, and this has happened in other parts of our tourist uh, community, is people resort to finding the full access medians. So they, they go, for example, a little about, about a half mile south of me, maybe they would try and use the side streets and come in on Cardinal. So they're just doing a 90 degree maneuver, not a 180 degree maneuver. The problem with this is now we're forcing what commercial traffic that we used to be able to confine to A18 back into the residential neighborhoods to the west. And I think that creates you know, problems of its own. So uh, I, I do have a big problem with the, the four foot separators. Um, I, again, I'm in favor of uh, the rapid light crossings, which can be done without all the separators. I think if we had 
larger medians. If we were able to have the 20, the 30 foot medians like you do down at Bel Air Plaza where someone can actually pull into a space and make a comfortable maneuver with the vehicles, I think I would be okay there too. But I think, I think what's gonna happen here is you're not going to get the safety benefits you're after because it's really not set up for the vehicular traffic we have to make the U-turns. I think it's going to be uh, cause a lot of problems. That's my that's my opinion. Thank you. We do have uh, Mr. Hanush would like to make one more quick comment. Thank you again for letting me speak. I'll be real quick. I just want to reiterate that I do agree uh, with the other uh, commenters. I just want to say again, I saw the $3.3 million estimate for this project. I did a Google search for this, and these are for the rapid flashing beacons. They, they're about fifteen dollars to $30,000 each. And I think there are six of them in the proposal. And even with the other cost in there, it, 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 I don't think my estimate got above $600,000. So I'm not sure where the $3.3 million figure comes from, but I think it could be done a, a lot cheaper. All right, thank you. Thank you. I am not seeing any other requests to speak online at this time. That being said, um, the verbatim recording of this hearing, uh, together with all written materials received as part of the hearing record, and all studies, displays, information, and material provided with the hearing will be made a part of the project record and will be available for public review upon request. I'd like to thank you for attending this public hearing and providing your input into this project. It is now approximately 7.20, and I hereby officially close this public hearing for this State Road A1A Atlantic Avenue Access Management Project. Thank you again, and have a good evening. Thank you, Jane. For those who are attending virtually, um, I will leave the virtual world open for just a few minutes in case you want to download a handout or, or submit a comment in the question box.
Okay, again, for those attending virtually, thank you so much for joining us for this public hearing. Um, we will be ending the GoToWebinar. We encourage you, if you um, have comments to submit, please contact the project manager directly. Um, you can also find the information on our website at www.cflroads.com.